Hey, what's going on? Wanted to chat to you today about how to use dual ISO on the Canon EOS M in crop mood to get 13 stops of dynamic range out of this tiny little cinema camera beast. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around and let's jump into the process. So actually getting into using the dual ISO on the Canon EOS M, it's very simple. First thing you need to do is find the scene that you want to shoot and uh, you'll have to excuse that this isn't an ideal scene right here. But for example, let's say that this is the scene I wanted to shoot. Uh, I would want to try and expose my image to the right just under the clipping points. See just under here, we have our little histogram, and uh, that is or, or an EV meter, and it's showing currently 2.6. So we actually want that to be around um, essentially zero or just under it. Okay, so you're wanting it to be kind of 0.4, something like that, uh, and that is your first exposure. So having that at your lowest ISO, uh, that's how you want to expose your image. So let's say, for example, that's where we actually wanted to expose it. Okay, we've got our exposure there. You go into the menu to the first exposure tab and you simply turn on dual ISO. Now the first setting it's gonna give you is one over eight, uh, 100 over 800. And this is supposedly giving us an extra two and a half stops of dynamic range. Now you can change this to 16 and 32, but those ISOs, uh, you start to introduce a lot of noise. So that's kind of defeating the whole purpose in my opinion. So you chuck that on, you get this kind of looking screen here. Uh, it's a little bit hard to kind of frame your shots or get your focus, so I generally do that before I actually start shooting in the dual ISO, um, and then I'll put the dual ISO on quickly to get the shot. But essentially that's it, you hit record, okay, and then you take it into MLV app to process it, and we'll jump into MLV app to show you some of the clips that we've been filming previously with the Canon USM. All right, so we need to jump into MLV app. So let's do that now. If you're new to the app, uh, it can be a little bit uh, daunting to start with, but essentially this is where you wanna go. You wanna import your file. It's going to, well, at least my computer does, it kind of picks up if my memory card's in there and picks up the shots, uh, well, sorry, picks up the memory card in these particular folder, which is nice. So I'm just going to select all. Can't do that apparently. I'm gonna import it. And this is the, uh, the process that you need to go through to, um, yeah, to kind of actualize the uh, dual ISO. So all the files have loaded here and here's a shot I took uh, in a bus yesterday. You can see that uh, this one's not as pronounced as some of the other ones, but you can see here that there's some kind of strange lines going on. This is generally a telltale sign that you have shot something with dual ISO as a way to remember it. Um, that one was not shot with dual ISO. Um, but also you'll be able to see here that down in the corner here, one of the uh, tabs that you can look at is dual ISO and you can actually see it as on. So all you need to do is click that. Okay, and it's going to transform your footage into normal looking footage. Now, you can see that this is extremely darker than the preview we get given in the um, in the viewfinder here, but this is part of the magic of this whole thing that as long as you expose for the highlights and stuff like that, you actually get a bunch of stuff to open up in the raw part of this. So I normally like to crank my exposure a fair bit and then really boosting the shadows is where we'll see the most kind of come back and as you can see this is this has been obviously a very highly aggressive grade and we can uh, or push here we can start to see some color noise coming in here but really the amount of dynamic range that you get back from this is just incredible if we contrast it with how it started which is this versus how it looks now that's pretty incredible so that is essentially what you do uh, to access and get the benefits of dual ISO. Uh, like I said before uh, in one of my other videos, what I generally do is I'll make any corrections that I want to make on the clip, then I'll select S-Log3, and then it's going to put it into S-Log3 here, and then you know if you want to make any sharpening or anything like that, uh, you can do that, but then I'll just export that uh, generally as a ProRes 422LT. Uh, I find that's a good uh, compromise between size and quality 
and then you will just simply export it to wherever you want and then you'll open that up in DaVinci Resolve and I don't actually want to export this and then you can color grade it however you want uh, in whatever way that you want so that is the process and uh, yeah thanks for checking it out I'm so glad that I actually sat down to figure out this feature. It's a feature I've known about for years, but every time over the last couple of years, I've tried to get it to work, it just never did. Um, and yeah, I don't know if it's just the latest build um, from Bilal in um, the crop mood or whatever it is, but this feature works flawlessly and it just really helps you out when you've got that high dynamic range scene and you don't wanna give it away that you're shooting on a $150 camera. So if you have any questions or comments about the process, uh, please feel free to put them down below. Um, and other than that, thanks for hanging out and we'll catch you in the next video.